my name is Sila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And last night, last night, I uh, listened to a really good video from uh, your boy Zach, uh, Comics Matter with your boy Zach. A uh, bit of a mouth of that channel. His channel is really good. He spent a lot of time being accused of being uh, a racist and a, a white supremacist. Uh, look, I don't know him. He may be. <laughs> you know, he might have KKK robes in his closet. But uh, he seems like an incredibly fair and reasonable person. He put out this really great video. I'm really glad he did. He was talking about a uh, an open letter that Leah Moore wrote. Leah Moore is the daughter of Alice Moore. She's a comic book writer. She's pretty. She's a pretty solid writer. She's had a, she's a solid career doing. Um, how would it go? Like feminine horror. I think it's. It's. I think. I think how how Zach described it. Um, but I think it's a very. It's a very good description of of her work. Uh, and yeah, I I personally uh, had some interaction with her. She uh, she was heading up a project called uh, Electric Comics, which is which was an attempt to bring uh, comic book marry comic books with uh, tablet technology or or phone technology. And she was heading up. It was it was designed by her father, Alan Moore, and it was fantastic. It was just a fantastic platform, and it really it was the only time I've ever seen e comics work. You know, it's like it rained, it maintained the uh, that unique comic bookness of it, that you can need comic books feel of it, how you could, you were able to control the uh, the rate of information coming to you, which you're not able to with with like something with film or uh, or you know it, yeah I, I find like these very these over animated e comics just I, I don't really like them. They don't they don't feel like comics. This felt very organically comic booky for me. Uh, I, unfortunately it went nowhere. I was really into it. I thought that I thought this thing would go like gang buses, so I like I, I uh, put a lot of time into it. I, I converted a lot of my, my comic books I was doing to uh, electric comic format, but unfortunately, it went nowhere. You know, it um, it really needed a uh, it really needed a reason for people to to go to it, and they didn't have one. They did, they needed like some a serious work by a top level creator in that format. Uh, that would so I I pitched this idea. And I think this pitch was fantastic. Some of the that really was some of the best work I've done. I took uh, I pitched this idea that I wanted to take whatever notes that Alan Moore had for his work uh, Big Numbers, which he never finished. Got up to issue two, actually issue three. I got I downloaded. I got still the others by the guy called I think Al Columba, but he went he went crazy. But alleged, I don't know. And he like cut up all the artwork. So he he was uh, Frank Miller's uh, not Frank Miller uh, Bill. Bill Sinkovitz's uh, art assistant, and he took over by the third issue. But he went batsy <laughs> as the story the story goes, and cut up all the artwork. Um, I think Paul Jenkins. Paul Jenkins is a really I met met him. He's a really decent guy as well. So uh, Leah Moore, she's um, yeah, it, it's really it, it, she could have really fit seamlessly into like this uh, intolerant, uh, belligerent, blue check mark. The uh, progressive that have, have uh, taken over the comic book industry and pretty much destroyed it, uh, <laughs> but uh, but she didn't because you know again she's always been like really she was, again with me. I'm talking my personal objective. She seemed really normal, nice, decent human being, like balanced, like just a, just a normal, but doesn't seem crazy in any way. You know, I mean, other than she writes you know comic books and just <laughs> fathers out of more. You know, other than that. Yeah. But she, she had personal interactions. It was like she was just just a nice, decent person. I really, uh, I have I have a lot of respect for her. She was she actually so real, genuine kindness to me. So I uh, I will always have have a warm spot in my, my uh, in my heart for her, as I have a warm spot in my heart for a father. Now Alan Moore is a uh, uh, I put out a video about him uh, just a couple of days ago, and he's he's an incredibly important part of my life. You know, he's been a part of my life. Uh, pretty much as from the time I could read, I remember I got him to him first when I think it was on his second year of Warrior. I I found out about it. I was at I was at this. Um, there used to be I mean, they may still happen. There used to be these great things called comic marts, which happened in the centre of London uh, in 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 the eighties and nineties. Um, they happened on Saturdays. This was before I, I, I was religious, so I, I, if now they wouldn't be able to go. But they happened on Saturdays, and it was fantastic. It was like these comic marts. He would just just 
long box after long box after long box of, of back issues. You and there was it was before the age of graphic novels. And they had the Eagle Awards there, which was the, the British Oscars for comics. And one year, Warrior was winning everything. I was big into 2000 AD. And Warrior, I was like, what the hell is this Warrior? So I, I, I was able to pick up a whole set of back issues from the phone. And I, I really got... I, I know Adam Moore's work beforehand, I think, from the Future Shocks. And I didn't think he didn't think that significant in 2000 AD at that time. I think Halo Jones was still a couple of years out. And I devoured as a. Anyway, he's been um, a profoundly important figure to me. I think he's. Uh, uh, I followed his work. You can you can see as it just up there. Yeah, I got I got pretty much it's uh, his whole collection of stuff. Yeah, I got Jerusalem. I still haven't been able to get through it, which is the uh, which is a really a great source of sadness. Thing. I got the book on tape, and I mean it's good, but it's like thirty hours long. So it's going to take me if I listen to it like an hour a day. It took me about a month to listen to it. Um, and I really think there should have been more production on it, like uh, maybe some more voices. But anyway, whatever. Uh, but I've listened to the first couple of hours of it like twenty times. I <laughs> just haven't been able to get through it. I'm not clever. He's clearly cleverer than me. I believe him to be um, really grounded and into is to be um, tapped into a real, honest, pure truth. He also seems to be a very a very loving and nice person. Yeah, so I I like Alan Moore a lot, you know, and it's not escaped me. He's the grumpy old man of comics who's angry. So, you know, which, yeah, you kind of take with a pinch of salt. So uh, so you put out this, uh, I was talking about, about Electro. Electro didn't go anywhere. I did, I, I pitched this idea to do big numbers uh, in it. Uh, and again, it's my, I, re, I recreated some of the scenes from the first episode as an Electro comic and, yeah, redrew everything. And uh, it, I was really, it was really, I was very, 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 very happy with it. But unfortunately, he had moved on, and Alan just what wasn't interested, which was uh, was a, a real shame. Because I figured if he did like an Indiegogo campaign to fund Electro Comics with that, and the only way you can get a print copy, yeah, you know, traditional print copy of being, would be to um, uh, would be to, to be, be be back at a, at a level. I think they would have got the cash influx they needed to really make it into what it could have been. And it's just tragic that it never was, because really, it broke my heart, because it, it was a great, great format, which just, again, didn't have the... Um, it, it didn't have the financial sa savvy to, to to make it, you know, which is, it was just sad. It was just sad. But anyway, that, that's a literal. So I put out a video a couple of days ago. Alan Moore is famously an anarchist, but he's saying to he's going to be voting in this election for Labour. Which made me really, really sad because I'm Jewish. You know, I'm, a, I'm a rabbi, but I'm Jewish, and Labour is a uh, is, is led by uh, an organisation called Momentum, which is headed by a gentleman called Jeremy Corbyn, who is a massive anti-Semite. He is the, I think, the most dangerous anti-Semite probably ever in British politics. I was going to say the most dangerous anti-Semite since uh, Mosley, but he's way. I think he's way worse and more influential. The most, uh, the mostly, mostly it was into fascism. It was like he was reflecting Hitler at the time. You know, it was very popular. Um, but Jeremy Corbyn, you know, Jeremy Corbyn was more of this like left wing socialist anti semite. Um, but anyway, so uh, so Leia put out the statement. Leia, Leia, his daughter, put out the statement saying he's voting for Labour. And she, a few days later, she returned to Twitter and this, wrote this beautiful letter. This really beautiful letter, which gave me an insight into a wonderful parallel world which tragically we we uh, we don't live in so she said yeah alan moore is the grumpy old man of comics as late she's got many of those comments as you put out his statement she is the he is the grumpy old man of comics yeah and, and he said but you know the alan is somebody her father is somebody who adores adores superheroes and has done for his entire life and the fact that he's been so tragic he's so he's so heartbroken by them over and over again means he's he he hates them now he doesn't read new comics which is tra it's, it's a tragedy it's a tragedy um and she uh and she i mean she she documented how his, his just glowing love for superheroes and superhero genre which which he's been stabbed in the heart with <laughs> if that that love is his love of superhero genre, he's been stabbed in his heart over and over again by the industry uh, by being screwed over, you know, like the um, okay, like the Watchmen had a a traditional uh, uh, graphic novel contract. They're like, is it 
once it goes out of print, then then rights of it will re return to Alan. But I get. I think when that contract was made, nobody nobody thought it would become what's called a a uh, perennial book, a book that will never go out of print because it's always popular. You know, that no, nobody considered that. So there should have been a, a perennial clause. And somebody from uh, from DC said, said "Listen, it's, we, you know, if I was there, I would have said, uh, I would say, look, Alan, I screwed up with this contract that uh, that that said we it'll become yours. Uh, you retain r rights to it after, after it goes out of print because I didn't, didn't think it would be out of print. So now I am I I'm, I'm a corporate executive and I am legally bound not to devalue our company." Not not to give away valuable assets. I did not know this would be a valuable asset. Let's work. Let's work out a deal which is, given what it is, what, uh, uh, like well, because uh, let's work out the best way. Maybe they shouldn't split it and giving him creative control, whatever. But here's a point. Could you? She uh, she said, could you imagine if he didn't get screwed over? If Alan Moore did not get screwed over by the people running the industry that created the the, the things that he loved. Could you imagine if he was not screwed over and he had just been making comics for all these years, for DC, for Marvel, over and over again? And we just see we saw his Green Lantern, we saw his Wonder Woman, so we, we saw you know Spider Man, we saw we saw all these incredible comics. Man, could you imagine what it would be like? Could you imagine what it would be? And it would be so much. It it, it would be gorgeous. It would be fantastic. And it's so it's so sad. It's so sad that that didn't happen. And it's so sad that he is that this loving but this person who I ever see him, he's just a font of intelligence and love. You know, he it's so sad he's been so damaged and so so brutalized by the by the industry, which uh, that from the things that he loved. It's so it's just it's tragic. It's a, I I view it as a uh, a tragedy, and the greater tragedy is that we we've lost countless comics that would have been wonderful. Would have like. It just it it it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. The letter she wrote was absolutely beautiful. So I want to say, you know, I'm always somebody who wants to go. Well, what what practically? What practically can we do? Okay, so so what? Who cares? What can we do? So here's here's what I would like to suggest. I have no idea how we can do it, but I think it's reasonably clear that DC probably will be licensing out their main characters within a few years. Yeah, I, I maybe within twelve months. They're just not making enough money to be... I mean, they're making so little money that they're under the radar of Time, Time Warner. <laughs> you know, that, uh, that they, they're, they're just doing so badly that, that um, it's not... It just if, if Time Warner ever notices them, they go, well, what the hell is this? And they, they realise they can, they can licence out the um, Batman or Superman or whoever to, uh, to whoever wants to buy them. So <laughs> here's what I'd like to suggest. It... If and when that happens, I would like to do a crowdsourcing campaign to buy Batman. Buy Batman, buy Superman, or somebody, but and give it to Alan. Say, Alan, this is your, you can do with it what you want. This is yours. Here's a gift. Here's Batman. Do what the hell you want with it. And, you know, I think... I don't know, in my fantasy view of the world, I think, I, I think he would, like... It'll be, you know, it'll be like me with my dog, you know, who's just like, whose who's back legs are going and he shits everywhere. <laughs> I have to clean him up. But then he's always like, come and sit in my lap and he's excited to see when I come home. Uh, and, you know, so like, I'm always, my heart, is like, I'm always like gruff. And then I see him, I'm like, oh. So I, in, my, in a fantasy world, I think he'll probably, he, I hope he would see, take this gift and go, oh, okay. <laughs> and, you know, because he always talked about how fun it would be do a comic book that instead of going dark and gritty, go they embrace the fantasy of Batman. You know, you have Bat Dog and Bat Mite and you know Shark Repellent Bat Spray. I would love to see that. I would love honestly I like to see any of his work. But more than that, I would like to see a joyful, a joyful, happy superhero work from Alan Moore. Just because I honestly I love him. I love Alan Moore. He's been an incredibly influential figure to me for my entire life. Anyway, so <laughs> that went on for a lot longer than I thought. My name is Sheila Beckin, the Rabbi for Another Planet. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, please let me know what you think. I would really, I really love to know your feedback. And look, if you're a big supporter of Labour, I apologise that um, that I'm <laughs> that I'm Jewish and I don't like it being anti-Semitic. <laughs>